Hey guys, Thomas here, and today I wanted to talk about Betaflight. Specifically, Betaflight 4.2. Pretty much the backstory behind me making this video is I recently gave the latest build a go, and I absolutely loved it. I didn't expect to love it as much as I did, but then I tried it and it was really, really awesome. It's worth noting that I haven't done any proper track testing with it yet because I don't have access to my normal track. So we will be doing a proper in-depth video on this on the BMS channel when the official build's released and when we finally have access to a track again and we can finish data collection. But it did fly really, really well by feel. So I did really wanna share basically what it's about and sort of what you can expect and how I anticipate some of the new functionality will be used. To start off with, a lot of the code in this new build of 4.2 is shared from last year's 4.1 build, specifically the prototype builds that I was running. For those of you who don't know, I was working a lot with the Betaflight developers last year, so I had prototype code pretty much right from the get-go all the way through to the end of the year, and this is the first time in a long time that I'm actually running code downloaded through the configurator online. Having said this, there are two new functions that are quite standout, and they are the dynamic idle and battery sag compensation. So dynamic idle is basically enabling the motors to break a lot harder into corners. What that means is the quad's able to handle prop wash a lot better, it's able to turn a lot tighter, a lot sharper, and a lot more aggressively while tracking your inputs more precisely. So the quad basically gets a little performance boost. It feels a little sharper, corners a lot better. If you do run your idle too low, you can experience the motor stalling from what I've heard. So I'm running about 5% motor idle with it, and that's been really, really good. Uh, as far as I know, 4.5 is the recommended. So it's one of those things I need to experiment with, but the dynamic idle has felt really good. Now, the other bit of code is the battery sag compensation code. Basically what this is, is a crazy bit of code that looks at your battery voltage and uses that to scale how much throttle is available to you. What that means is that while you don't have full throttle at the beginning of your flight, the quad will feel the same from 4.2 volts all the way down to 3.5. I was really skeptical about this bit of code when they were first telling me about it because just the whole concept of trying to account for battery sag and then also not have too much power losses, I just didn't think it would be that worthwhile of a trade-off. I didn't think it would really work that well. However, actually trying the fully implemented code and it feels really, really good. The top end throttle, you've lost about 10 to 20%. This is depending on your propellers and motor setup. For my motors, because most of the power is actually in the mid-range, losing that top 10-ish percent really doesn't do much, so it just really gives me more efficiency, but man does the quad feel consistent. And this is where the benefit of this sag compensation is sort of twofold. So not only is it making it more consistent because the power is always there, but because the power is always there, it also means the flight controller is able to correct a lot more sharply and pretty much the same every single time. Sometimes when you're flying, you probably feel the battery starting to go and you, you know you have to work the throttle a little bit harder to keep in the corner and sort of, it's almost like this momentary looseness in the way the quad's handling where it just wants to run wide. This will pretty much account for that because the quad feels dead consistent the whole time because the power is always available. When you do go below 3.5 volts, you will start to feel the battery sag because that's when you've used up all that compensation. However, because it's taken so long to get to that level, the sag is even more gradual, so you can account for it even more easily. This is one of those things that I thought that maybe you would adjust from race to race. So if it was like a single lap time trial, then maybe you just want the full power. But after actually flying it, I am tempted just to leave it on. Like I said before, I do need to track test this to be sure because I don't have all of the data yet, but flying by feel and just ripping around some trees, uh, recording some lap times, it's really, really nice. I think regardless of the racing scene in freestyle, this will definitely be the go just because the quad feels so consistent. It's really, really surreal to fly it. 
and yeah, it's just it's something that you gotta try. Just uh, give it a go, because yeah, it's really really cool. I really can't wait to get the track data and actually see how it performs on track, but I suspect that in 99% of cases, it's just going to be better. Overall, I've been really happy with this code in the short time I've used it, enough anyway to make a really short video before we even do the official BMS video. Um, but yeah, if you want to give this a go, then go into the Betaflight configurator, set your build from release to development builds, and then you can flash the 4.2 firmware. I would just go which, with whichever one is the latest. And make sure you've also read up on the Betaflight wiki on how to set up everything properly. That way you can have the best experience possible. And yeah, let me know what you think. And yeah, hopefully we'll get track data soon so we can do a full video on all the new goodies in 4.2. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay safe and happy flying. See ya.